Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Alternative Jargon, episode number 38. It's been a little bit. Um, I graduated college. I had a lot of final exams. I had to wear a cap and gown and sit and listen to people talk for two hours. And now I'm looking for a job. I am officially a big boy now. Got to start doing big boy stuff. Got to get health insurance. Got to do a lot of really, really thrilling things. That is what has been on the horizon, and the horizon is quickly approaching. Nonetheless, I'd like to keep this up, so let's just get right into it. Hunter Biden is on trial. Not sure what for, and I don't care. Here's my take. Um, I think, like Charlie Sheen famously said in his 2011 interview, um, you get a seven-gram rock, and you give it to Mr. Biden, and you go... If it doesn't fit, we must acquit. Um, Get Mr. Biden to try to snort a seven gram uh, rock of crack cocaine in the courtroom right in front of the jury and then let them decide. This is, of course, a joke. He's being, um, yeah, not being sued. He is in court on trial right now because of apparently illegal weapons. I guess in 2018 he bought a gun illegally, something like that, which is a lot um, more boring of a story than I thought would come out of this guy. We all know Hunter is like the coolest guy in the world. Hunter knows how to party. Hunter knows how to get down. Hunter knows how to get around town. He is the guy you want to go to if you want to have a good time, um, depending on your definition. So the fact that this is just a gun thing, I mean, really, it'd be more fun of a gun thing if this was maybe about how Hunter killed somebody. Um, Then I would be all for the guns in, you know, a methamphetamine-induced rage session. He was seeing red and decided um, to slaughter every escort that was saved on his phone. Something fun like that. It would have been a lot cooler of a thing, but... Um, the guy apparently didn't even do anything cool with the gun. He he probably took some selfies with it and saved them on his computer, something like that. By the way, the president of the United States son, um, needs a better phone with a better camera. I'm not one of those freaks who has, uh, intentionally dug up all the naked pictures of Hunter Biden in the shower with, you know, foreign strippers and things like that in order to... Um, show his need for incrimination. Um, I don't care how much I don't like a president or their son. I'm not going to willingly go out there and look for pictures of a guy's dong on the internet. That's just not me. Um, But these pictures, I've seen a few of them, not the very explicit ones, but you know, the ones where he's smoking crack in the car and flaunting the weapon, those ones. The quality is really bad. Um, I don't know if he's on Google Pixel or Motorola or whatever it is, but I think I've taken higher quality pictures with my GTA character. So this guy needs a better phone first and foremost. Um, It does sort of add to the mystique of the images though. You know, it adds to the dark web-esque nature of them, sort of makes them a little bit cooler adds a little bit of aura to them. That word's huge now. Um, which, you know, usually the um, the reinvention of words through social media, I'm not a fan of, but the whole aura trend, I'm kind of a fan of because it is funny. Um, you know, before I go out on the town, I have to take a look in the mirror and make sure my aura is on point or I'll just call the night off. So... Um, I'm totally on board with that trend. I can't even believe I'm saying that, but I am on board with the Aura trend. I think it's great. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on with Hunter. We'll see what happens. Probably nothing. Um, he's going to probably still be rocking in the free world when this is all said and done. And you know, it is what it is. So the... The next thing that's really trending right now, and has been for a little while, I think I talked about it previously, but it's even worse now, and that is the TikTok shop. The TikTok shop is like 20% of everything that I see um, on TikTok now. 
I am really glad that they put the giant orange square in the bottom left hand of the videos so that as soon as I see that I can scroll past um, my thumb. Uh, they talk about fast twitch muscles in terms of, you know, NFL players, NBA players, world class athletes. Um, who are the most explosive at their sport are known to have really fast twitch muscles. I am very quickly developing the fastest twitch muscle on planet Earth in my right thumb because the second I see that orange box, I'm gone. It's over. I'm gone. It's been done. I don't care if the video has a nice hook. I don't care if the video um, starts with a thesis statement about the state of the universe, whatever it may be, I'm out of there. But nonetheless, they're still being shoved down my throat, whether I like it or not. So they are all over the place. The biggest one I've seen in the past month or so is this thing called the Mighty Bar. The Mighty Bar is essentially a rectangular prism with a wedge on the end of metal, that you put on your keychain, and it can pry Legos apart. Um, and they show people, um, you know, pulling Legos apart, shotgunning a beer, uh, uh, all types of stuff with the Mighty Bar. And it's only $10 right now, guys. Go get it while it's hot. Go get it while it's hot. Um, don't use your fingers. Don't use a car key. You know, all the comments say, actually, I have a house key. Um, I will admit, I am sort of a fangirl for anything that's um, metal and will last forever. One time I bought the Fisher Space Pen bullet version uh, that comes with refillable cartridges that can be used in space, by the way, um, because I had a fixation on writing utensils for a little bit, so I bought uh, a $20 pen. But guess what? I've had the pen for almost three years now. And it's got a nice weathered look to it, and it's kind of cool. So I um, am a big advocate for small metal trinkets that will last forever. But this one I just can't get on board with, and I think it's because it's being sold on TikTok. If I saw an infomercial for the Mighty Bar in like 2015 while I was watching Sports Center in front of a bowl of cereal, I'd probably be dialing the number right away. But these things that they sell on TikTok just cannot get me. I feel like I'm shopping at uh, a five below that's about to go out of business and all they have left are the little dumb things now. Anytime I see a TikTok shop ad and every once in a while I'll be on the homepage of TikTok and one of my fingers will accidentally swipe one way or the other and it'll go to the shop page and then my phone, my whole phone will lag out because it is um, just overwhelmed with the amount of drop shipping on screen at that time and it does lag a little bit. But... Um, as soon as I'm on that page, I go right back. I, I don't want to fall into that world, and I uh, just don't want to be part of that hemisphere. So the next thing I've seen a lot on TikTok shop are cheap energy drinks. Um, I drink basically an energy drink or a coffee every single day, if not both. Um, in 10 years, my heart will explode, and my doctors will find a record amount of taurine in my veins, but I still won't buy the energy drinks off TikTok shop. It's like, um, you know, someone with 50 followers is selling me um, a Rise energy drink that's only 87 cents per can right now, guys. I don't care. Um, I don't care. And frankly, none of them are Monster. Kind of uh, loyal to Monster. If they had Monster on TikTok shop, I might think about it. All I can imagine, though, is that I have never bought anything on TikTok shop, and I only know like a handful of people who have, but I just imagine buying a 24-pack of energy drinks on TikTok shop. It would arrive at your door in, you know, three months, four months, battered and bruised. I'd have to take whoever shipped it to trial for battery. Um, I, that's just what I assume. If I am close-minded on this topic... Please sound off in the comments, prove me wrong, and uh, maybe I'll do a segment where I buy something on TikTok shop and review it. But if they're not battered and bruised, um, I feel like there'd be, you know, rat urine on the, the lip area of the cans. There would just be something off. 
uh, it's too good to be true. And I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, I, there's just something off about it. And I can't quite put a finger on it. And that's why I don't put my finger on the buy button. The last thing that I have been just unable to evade has been hats with beer logos on it. I love beer. I love beer logos. And I love hats. And TikTok definitely knows this. Xi Jinping or whoever's behind the in the control room of TikTok, they know me better than I know myself. Of course they do. Of course they're going to put the beer hats on my page. Um, I am prime suspect number one who they should be targeting. However, I really can't wait for these to go away. Um, these would have been cool maybe four years ago. But now a corduroy snapback with the Coors Light logo from 1960 on it is worn by the worst people you know in your life. War criminals. Mobsters. I'm just kidding. But uh, male and female alike... Um, usually if I see someone with one of these on, it, I, you know, I don't know, <clears throat> but Donald Trump has been found guilty on 34 counts of, um, hush money. By the way, every time I read that headline, it makes me want a slushy. The word hush money makes me want to go to target and get a big soft pretzel and an icy drink. Um, there has to be a different term they can use. Maybe this is all being coordinated by Icy, the little dog with the hat on that drinks Slurpee drinks. Um, the term hush money just makes me want, uh, a slushy. I wanted to get that out of the way first and foremost. Also, does this make me, I don't know if this makes, I don't know what this quantifies me as. But whenever I'm watching a movie or a TV show and someone with a particular accent starts talking, it makes me hungry for whatever cuisine is from their country. Is that politically incorrect to say? Every time I watch The Dark Knight, which I have seen countless times, great movie, um, and we get to the scenes with Mr. Lau in them. Sorry, I've got the hiccups. We get to the scenes with Mr. Lau in them, and he has um, a very strong you know, Mandarin um, accent in his voice, it makes me want to go get lo mein. When I watch The Sopranos, I want to go get a cappuccino and a large cheese pizza. When I watch Breaking Bad and it gets to one of the scenes with the cartel and they're speaking Spanish, I want Chipotle. Is that politically incorrect to say? I don't know if it is or not, but I just admitted it um, online. So I'm putting myself out there uh, I don't know if I need some type of therapy for that. Maybe I am just a fat slob who gets hungry at the uh, littlest amount of stimulation. If pa if I was a Pavlov dog, I'd probably get hungry by looking at a bell instead of when it rings. Um, but anyway, Donald Trump paid off a porn star, um, I guess, and just you know told her to keep quiet. Um, this is going to probably boost his poll numbers by a lot. Um, who, who, what high profile, uh, male celebrity has not, um, you know, shagged somebody they shouldn't have shagged, so to say, not to get Austin Powers on you, but seriously, um, this is kind of like scraping the bottom of the barrel, I feel like, and, in terms of what you can get the guy on. Um, but they're doing their best. They've been doing their best for 10 years to get him. Um, yeah, you know, <sighs> guilty on 34 counts. I don't, does that mean he paid her 34 times? I haven't read any of the fine print and I'm not going to, cause I really don't care. Same with the Hunter Biden thing. I scrolled to the, let's see, the third line of this article says he purchased a gun illegally. And that's all I read. Cause I don't care. Who cares? Um, so, but yeah, 34 counts. If you want to um, get more details on the ruling, just Google search Donald Trump rule 34. 
Um, there's a lot of good details under that section online from what I've heard. Um, and don't do that. Actually, don't do that. While I was writing up my ideas for this episode, I was actually uh, sent a meme on Instagram from my friend Brandon um, with this exact joke in it. So they beat me to the punch. I know the Trump stuff is sort of a week old at this point, but I've been uh, trying to get the wheels turning on this episode for about that amount of time. That's why I'm late to it, and that's why the joke I already had planned is no longer fresh. So in this industry, you've really got to be the first one to the punch. So the first one to the slushy, first one to the hush money. Um, you know, the thing about this is, is that our country is going to be the same no matter who gets elected. And that is the title of this episode. And look, you need a, a title that's going to grab people's attention. And during uh, a leap year when it's election year in America, uh, there's always um, more talk than ever, more ads than ever, more everything than ever about politics and yada, yada, yada. So I needed one to get the, the attention of the viewer, the listener. But I'm going to elaborate on the point that uh, everything's going to be the same no matter who wins, no matter who loses, nothing's going to change. It's all okay. Don't go vote. Elections don't matter. Um, look, the only thing I care about in this election is inflation. I want more money, and you want more money. We all want more money, and we all want our groceries to not cost, um, you know, fifty dollars for a stick of jerky and a twelve pack of Red Bull. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? That is my only concern in this election is inflation. Um, but I have a theory, uh, and by the way. Um, if Biden gets elected, stuff's going to be expensive. If Trump gets elected, stuff's probably going to be expensive. And if RFK gets elected, there's going to be a no topless car rule in Dallas-Fort Worth area. Everything's basically going to be the same as it was before. Um, but anyway, let's get to my theory. And my theory is that if everyone in this country had no idea who was the president and they closed their eyes every four years when it was time to elect someone new and they had no clue who the president was, they wouldn't care who the president was. And we are 250 years into this American experiment at this point. Whether you like this country or not, I do like this country. I like living here. It's fun. Um, it doesn't really do much. All right, there might be an executive order here and there that does change things, but I think if people had no idea who was pulling strings, no one would be able to tell. And by pulling strings, I mean like a little thread because there's really not much these people can do. Um, the, the biggest strings, the ropes of our society are pulled by people we probably can't see um, for the most part. Um, and so I just don't get why people get so worked up over this stuff. Yes, I know. Um, the only reason, the only valid reason to be worked up about this election is that both people running are, you know, like 80 years old and probably loading their diaper on their way to do a rally. Both of them, probably. Um, it would be nice to have a younger president again. Uh, it would be nice to have... Yeah, somebody who probably isn't on methamphetamines every day. That'd be cool. That would be kind of cool. But, uh, I, yeah, that's the reality, in my opinion. And I will die on this hill for this theory, by the way. Um, if people didn't know who was running our country, they wouldn't care. Um, and this isn't to say that you shouldn't care about politics at all because it does affect uh, our everyday lives in some aspects. It really does. Um, that is not what I'm saying at all uh, is that you shouldn't care. What I'm saying is that you shouldn't vote. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Saying that you shouldn't vote today is like uh, doing the Nazi salute you know, post-World War II. Um, people treat voting like it's, um, 
you know, the greatest thing since sliced cheese. And voting is cool. Voting is awesome. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to change too much. Is that so controversial to say? It probably is. It probably is. Um, but it's a joke. These are jokes. But I'm saying the only votes that you should uh, be very meticulously researching and uh, casting are things like whether or not to put caffeine back in four locos or not on petition.org. Things like that. Um, whenever I get in the booth this November, um, I'm hoping they let me bring in a blindfold and a dart because I'm going to step into the booth. I'm going to blindfold myself and throw it at the wall and, um, whatever it lands on is what it will be. And I am not even going to look where it lands. Uh, I'm just going to have one of the very nice people running the booths come up and say, uh, could you please grab me a pen and write in wherever and check the box wherever it hit. Um, that's what I'm going to do. And if they, if they say, sir, it didn't, it didn't land on uh, any of the candidates, then I'm going to write in the mighty bar. At least we know it won't crack under pressure. Use code AJ at checkout for 10% off purchase. No, uh, us only C store for details. <sighs> But voting for the mighty bar is a much easier conversation to be had than with anyone who is um, super into politics. It's easier to say I voted for a stainless steel keychain that can pry Legos apart. That is more probably more life-changing than uh, either of these guys will be if they get in there. So... That's the plan. That's an easier conversation to be had. Um, I'll either vote for the Mighty Bar or I'll, you know, write in a Coors Light snapback corduroy hat with a green brim. This is not a partisan political show. It is a bipartisan political show. I love to make fun of people on both aisles. Um, Everybody sucks and that's okay on both sides. And uh, politics should not be the center of everyone's life unless you are in office and you are voting on legislation. And in that case, you're probably an insufferable sociopath who's never been to a party. Why do you think they're called political parties? Because those people were never invited to anything before. Um, But yeah, The rest of this episode is going to be dedicated to all the wonderful things you can focus on in your life besides politics. There are many of them. Um, And once again, um, for the people that don't understand that I am joking, uh, don't completely ignore politics. But if it's the last thing on your mind before you fall asleep at night, I've got bad news for you. Focus on what is in front of you. And I think you'll be a lot happier if you do. Um, focus on stacking up points in the McDonald's app. The $5.20 piece was back for the month of May. I used it a good bit on my break at lunch at work. It's great. Focus on that. Uh, just actually reaped what I sowed the other day, harvested those points and got a free large coffee. That is what you really should be zeroing in on. That's the focal point of the day in, day out. That's why you wake up. That's why you snooze the alarm. That's why you go to work. Um, Focus on reading a book, maybe. Um, Right now, I'm on my fifth book of the year. Uh, Actually, finished the fifth book of the year. Not to flex, but whenever I started writing this up, it was uh, prior to me finishing it. But before this last one, I I just finished The Da Vinci Code. It was uh, pretty interesting. Um... Just a nice novel. And the reason why I wanted something, just an easy story to read through, is because prior to The Da Vinci Code, I read one of the worst books I've ever read in my entire life. And that book was The Broom of the System by David Foster Wallace. If you don't know David Foster Wallace, he's this dude. He was a writer. He uh, wrote Infinite Jest, which is like a really complex book that a lot of people rant and rave about. Uh, He hung himself in 2008. He wore a bandana because he sweat too much. 
Um, and I was like, you know, I kind of want to read Infinite Jest someday, but maybe I should familiarize myself with this other guy's work before I jump in the deep end. So I found The Broom of the System by David Foster Wallace at my local secondhand bookstore for $2.99. And I said, what a steal. It's 500 pages. You know, that's tens of hours of entertainment for $2.99. There's not many things you can get for that cheap anymore, for that amount of entertainment hours. So I started reading it. And uh, it was really, really good. It was really interesting. A lot of interesting characters. The main character was very uninteresting, but luckily a lot of the side characters uh, were good. And there was a lot of different plot lines going on, a lot of mystery. Uh, It was really unlike anything I've ever read. And then you get to the end of the book and it just ends. And nothing is tied up. Nothing is tied up. Okay, I mentioned earlier about the people that pull the strings in our society. This book had ropes, like, this big around, like the ropes that you tie up a cruise ship to, to dock. This book had ropes that were, like, the size of a boa constrictor um, all through the book that it was pulling and pushing and moving around. And you go, how is he going to tie the knot at the end with all this? It's getting crazy. And then the book ends. And the ropes are sitting there, and the cruise ship is drifting into the harbor and is probably going to hit a bridge and make it fall in Baltimore. Nothing was tied up. Nothing was ever tied up. Um, David Foster Wallace, evidently not a Boy Scout, because he did not know a single knot to do with the end of this thing. It just ended. Um, I am a fan of endings sometimes where... Uh, they sort of present the knot in front of you and then you as the reader, you as the audience, uh, when you put the book down and close it, you get to pull the strings yourself. Those are kind of fun. It puts respect into the audience. It respects the intelligence and the intellect of the reader or the audience to go, hey, I threw you the alley-oop, now you dunk it. Those are awesome. Um... If we're going to follow that analogy, though, David Foster Wallace took the basketball, stabbed a knife through it, and threw it in the ocean with this book. He did not throw you a single pass. Um, He dribbled. He did crossovers. He did between the legs, spin moves around screens, pick and rolls, all book. And then we get to the end, and he puts a knife in the ball and throws it away. He didn't shoot the ball. He didn't go for a layup. He didn't dunk. He didn't. You know, he didn't do anything. Um, So that was a very, very disappointing ending. I'm not going to spoil the whole book. Um, What is there to spoil, though, if there's really no resolution? Um, Maybe I am just too low IQ to figure this out, but I did read the reviews on Goodreads, and a lot of people felt the same way. Um, By the way, that was after I formulated my own opinion. I never check reviews on books or movies until I've seen them myself because I don't want to go into um, any type of content with a a bias, with a prejudice because I want to think about what I think of it first and then see what other people say after. Otherwise, that kind of ruins the experience, in my opinion. Um, But anyway, enough about that. Next thing you can focus on, focus on developing a substance abuse problem instead of getting into politics. Um, You're not going to be able to focus on politics if you're waking up violently shaking every morning, um, counting down the minutes uh, to blow your next watermelon ice cloud just in order to hit the snooze button. That is a lot cooler than, you know, posting a political thing on your Instagram story. It's cooler to um, wake up at 3 a.m., take a big puff of your elf bar and go back to sleep than it is to wake up at 3 a.m. and see how the hush money trial is going before you go back to sleep. I'll just say that. Um, I'd rather be friends with someone who's on a 12-step program than Harry Sisson. Focus on the New York Times games. Um, I just became a New York Times premium member for $4 a month uh, so that I have access to the crossword. You get free access to all the other games, but I said I want to try my hand at the big boy 
the Top Gun, the big crossword. I've only solved one so far in about the week and a half since I've had it. They're really tough, but I do love the challenge. Um, Connections is fun. I'm actually on a six-day Wordle streak now, too. I know that Wordle is not as popular as it once was, but it has re-entered my life, and it gives me something to do while I'm on the toilet besides read Hush Money Trial headlines on Twitter. And for that, I am eternally grateful. Um, last thing, just focus on your life. Get your money up, get your funny up, get both up. Um, get your penis up with Blue Chew, the sponsor of this week's episode. I'm just kidding, I wish. Anyway, it's a little bit of a short episode, but I hope you enjoyed. Tried to pack as much into this half hour as I could so that you can get back to vaping and reading Hush Money headlines. Um, I just graduated college, and now it's time to really enter the sandbox of the world for free, so let's make a sandcastle. See you next time.